Hey, Lodi residents and friends of social media. Lieutenant Mobilio here from the Lodi Police Department. And we are ready to film the Lodi Show, episode number 11. And our special guest tonight is going to be none other than Redstone Lane Park. And we're going to meet Redstone Lane Park. They're going to perform for us today. We're going to talk a little bit about them growing up in Lodi, where they grew up in Lodi, and everything that pertains to Lodi tonight. And then, like I said, they're going to perform for us. So... Redstone Lane, right off the bat, Redstone Lane Park should automatically trigger a response of Lodi. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight is Lodi. So to my left is Matt Nacito, Frank Trent, Richie Sabatino, otherwise is known as Richie Sabs. And they make up the team or the band Redstone Lane Park. Hey, guys, how are you? Thanks for coming in tonight. I really appreciate it. And, and like I said earlier... Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Lodi. We all grew up in Lodi. Um, so, Matt, let's just start off with you. I mean, you and I go back way back because we're from the same area. So where where are you? Where were you from in Lodi right. and where'd you grow up? So we grew up in the uh, the Woodmere section, right? The best part of Lodi. <laughs> Some may say. And uh, just a quick story about that, where I used to come down to where you and your family was at, at the auto parts uh, store, yep. which I... I uh, you know, my dad used to tell me, just go get a spark plug. And he used to take an hour between getting my, my chops busted and then finally getting my, my uh, spark plug to leave. Right. Which was fun. But so where, where, were you, where actually were you from? Where, where were you from? Trudy you Drive. Trudy Drive, right. And I was from the Avenue, so that was our connection. Um, in Lodi was Trudy Drive and the Avenues. And Frank? I lived on Terrace Avenue and by the Hilltop School. Or other people know Farmer's Field. Correct. I was up there, too, where we used to ride our BMX bikes all the time. Right. And Rich? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I grew up on Walnut Street, which is uh, right behind the Lodi Boys Club. Right. Uh, so I went to Roosevelt um, uh, Grammar School. Right. And, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time at the Boys Club growing up because it was just a short walk right through the back, cutting through there, and a lot of good times back there. We had our own version of Farmer's Field where... Right behind my house, we we built trails, you know, and for, that would be where today um, the senior the, citizen the senior building center, is. Correct. Yeah, where where the senior center is, uh, their parking lot, and there's another house right next to the house I grew up in. Mm -hmm. But that whole thing was wide open, and that was basically my backyard growing up, right. which, which was pretty awesome. Right, absolutely, yeah. a lot of fun back there. Um, so you went to you said uh, Roosevelt. Roosevelt School. Yeah, were you in Roosevelt School at the time that the fire? So I started kindergarten in the original Roosevelt School, right. and that, I want to say it was like maybe November or December is when the fire was, and at that point, then they started busing us to Columbus School. Columbus School. And I think the busing lasted like just for the photo op for the newspaper, and then it was walking to Columbus School. Uh. <laughs> and uh, I went to Columbus School, I think, through first grade. Uh, I don't know if we came back. At the beginning of second grade or like partially through first grade, but it was pretty quick. We, we didn't have to go there for a long time before they built the school that's there now, mm. minus the big addition that they right, used to the take up the whole the playground. Yeah. That's all yeah. the schools. That's all the schools. Yeah. And, and Frank, did you go to uh, Hilltop School? I went to Hilltop. And then? First to six, and then Thomas Jefferson Middle School. Okay. And Matt, I'm sure you went to Washington Washington School. school. Yes, yeah. as did I. Yeah. Um, so... Let me ask you this. What are some experiences that you can talk about or mention here? Uh, some things that, that happened to you or Lodi experiences. What were some of the things that you can talk about in, in Lodi that you experienced as a, as a young man or a young a child and even as an adult? Yeah, I mean, early on, um, you know, all the time I spent down Kennedy Park uh, playing baseball. Uh, you know, with my dad doing the Santa Claus thing, I'd be on the float throwing out candy canes. Right. Um, and just hanging out, uh, you know, months uh, all the streets, you know, at, at night and hanging out with your friends, mm. you know, it was a great, fun place to grow up. Absolutely, in. absolutely, especially by the avenues, and the inspection station. Right, a lot of fun had down right. in, that, in that area. Yeah. Uh, just to uh, preface something with uh, Matt Nacido, uh, his dad was Vincent Nacido, and his dad was in charge of the recreation program. Correct. 
uh, for many years. Parks and Rec, right? Parks and Rec. And uh, I remember being with your dad and, and going on the different trips in the recreation uh, department there. And, and then naturally, Annabelle, I came in after your right. dad, and she was there up until she just recently retired. But uh, that's... That's uh, Matt Nacito's connection to uh, Lodi is that his dad was actually um, in charge of the parks and uh, recreation program here in Lodi. Uh, Frank, some of the things, experiences here well, in Lodi? Well, of course, anyone from Lodi knows Burger King <laughs> yeah. from back then. Right. I mean, you know, we used to hang out there all the time and then, you know, until we would get chased away by the by police. By the police, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. And actually something with, with Matt, um, back in probably 1985 mm -hmm. or 86, my band DWI did a show at the uh, amphitheater here and benefit concert for his dad. Ah, very nice. And was your band made up of Lodi guys at the time, or was it yes. diverse? It was. It was. It was all Lodi guys. Do you remember who was in the band? Uh, Bobby Senti. Bobby Senti. Uh, Ronnie Jackson. Um. Oh, Bobby Sticker. And Bobby. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I had to think about that, man. Yeah. Those Lodi guys. <laughs> yeah, all Lodi guys. And uh, Rich. So I grew up behind the boys club, so I, I spent basically from when I was six years old till I was 18, I, I practically lived in the boys club. Um, there was a dinner program there, so I would eat dinner program. I would eat dinner there. You know, we'd be there all day, eat dinner, and hang out at night, and just go home at the end of the night. Uh, I got I got a little older, and you know, we hung out on the wall down here. The wall, and again until. Right. Cop chase us away. Now those those <laughs> again those of you who don't know where where the wall is or or the the term the wall because that was actually a term back in the day yeah. the wall yeah. the wall kids yeah I guess yeah. you were one of the wall kids yeah. uh, the wall is second right generation by the, what is it <laughs> we were I was second generation yeah. wall because the older group before us had started that and we kind of just like worked our way into it as I got older so. So those of you who don't know where the wall is, uh, the wall is right by the Passaic Street Bridge before you go over the bridge uh, by First Street or the Boys Club. And it's that wall that's right along the uh, riverbanks, and they used to call it the wall. Am I correct on that? Yeah, yeah 100%. And, uh, and a lot of people used to have a lot of kids, young, young, even teenagers used to hang out there, and that was the place to hang. Me, on the other hand, I, I, with Matt, it was Kennedy Park. It was the inspection station. It was the factories. Redstone industrial, Lane. Industrial Redstone yeah. Lane. And, <laughs> I, was, I was more in Richie. <laughs> with Richie. Yeah, you yeah, were? Yeah, yeah. What, but it, because your area, not so much, but where where did you hang out um, in, up in that area in Terrace Ave? Was it more a hilltop school? or No, I mean, when we were really little, yeah. But after that, once we hit middle school, we basically all went down to the wall, to Burger King, to behind uh, Del Glenn. Del Glenn, yeah. The, the, the yeah. Oh, Bella Vista Apartments, yeah. there yeah. was yeah. the trails, we used to call it. Mm -hmm. And we used to hang out there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. So how did you guys all, all meet? I mean, was it from school that you all met? Or how do you all know each other? And how did you guys come about? That's a good, that's a good yeah, question, yeah, actually. Yeah. Um, I can't answer it. Just, just being from Lodi, you kind of like know everybody. It's one of those type deals, you know? So just and through hanging out, and just, yeah, just, just through hanging out each other, and basically just from that, and yeah, plus being mutual in friends, bands. yeah. Right. And, well, you uh, guys were all in in different bands at different times, mm -hmm. going from back when you guys were teenagers up to to this point today. Correct? Yeah, I, as you know, I I started out playing with uh, with Kenny and Paul, yeah. uh, no exception, back in the day, and you know we played I don't know how many shows here at the amphitheater way back then, and right. uh, you know I, I guess basically through music mostly and, and mutual friends a lot. Um, and you came to came to uh, yeah I guess mm -hmm. yeah. okay so and, go ahead oh, oh I'm sorry I just <laughs> I was, just everyone knows I was in a band called Sequity with everyone who knows Shane mm. Wild <laughs> the heavy metal mailman right. of Lodi just to yep. give him a shout <laughs> <laughs> and he's still working I, I've seen him in the gym a couple oh, of times really? yeah I, I didn't know when we were at was. Gold's gym I I ran into him oh, a couple oh, of times oh I had no so. idea. That would be he Shane. Was a, he was a character. Correct. Yeah, he was a character. Shane, right? Shane. Yeah, Shane Wild. Yeah, Shane Wild. Um, other than music, uh, and we're going to get into the music in a minute, but other than music, what are some of the hobbies that you enjoy enjoy doing? Huh? I it's really my main it's my main one to be honest with you, but sometimes just cutting the lawn to get away from from my kids for a while <laughs> if I need to get out of the house. You know, like uh, out, outdoor work, right. you know, stuff like yard that work. I enjoy. Yard work, yeah. Okay. Frank? Uh, unlike Matt, I do no yard work. I want nothing to do with it. <laughs> I have nothing. I don't even clean my pool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's basically, yeah, it's really music. I mean, 
Well, you got a I, you I got a if I uh, San Francisco Giants shirt on. Are you a Giants? No, I was I was just in San Francisco, okay. and I thought it looked <laughs> like cool because of the okay. New York Giants. So you're not so, a you're not a Giants baseball fan? No, 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 not at all, not at all, not at all. I mean, okay. basically, my my favorite thing to do is going out to eat. Okay. <laughs> Rich, I pretty know pretty much know what you're gonna say. But. So you know, uh, jujitsu is my thing. Uh, right. That's if I'm not, you know, I, I do personal training as well. So uh, you know, fitness, jujitsu. Well, what's a shout out to your? You have a your own business. What, um, shout well, out to yeah, you? my my friend owns a place in um, in Salabrook, uh, the Edge Ultimate Martial Arts. Uh, right. that, that's where I teach and that's where I train. And uh, yeah, man, that's that's pretty much it. You know, it's uh. My daughter's grown up, so I don't have to worry about you. I don't have to go outside to cut the lawn to get away from anybody. <laughs> She's grown up. She's on her own. She lives in Lodi now, too, right over on Cora Bell. So okay. she li- she actually lives two blocks from where I grew up, which is which is kind of cool, too. Hmm. So All right, good. good. All right, let's get into the music, okay? Like I said, Redstone Lane Park is the name of the band. Um, for those of you who don't know where Redstone Lane Park is, it is a, uh, a small park where it's actually actually a pretty big park, and it's right off of Trudy Drive, um, where you would say it would be Branca Court and Redstone Lane, and hence the name Redstone Lane Park. How did you guys come up with that name, and you know what was it that, that Redstone Lane Park, how did you, you know, whose, whose brainchild was that to come up with that? Yeah, but, go ahead, my, my Jew. <laughs> yeah, we were we were gonna do a show uh, uh, earlier on uh, months ago. Uh, do uh, it was sort of gonna be. I forget if it was gonna be a benefit for for COVID or I I, I forgot. Yeah, it was supposed to be something for COVID, exact, COVID relief. Exactly what it was, but it, it was gonna be all Lodi, mm. all Lodi musicians, Lodi band. Was that something and, uh, that Jack James was trying to put correct. together? There? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we were trying to come up. I know Rich came up with some things, and then um, I was just uh, looking. I don't know what made me think of it. I just uh, thought of uh, I'm thinking where I, I where grew up, names of streets and mm. all that. And I just it, it came to me, and I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. And mentioned to the guys, and like, yeah, that, that sounds pretty it good. Definitely so does, it does fit. It, I mean, it it's, does, a, it's a yeah. good name for yeah. Lodi guys. Yeah. It's, a, it's a Lodi area, and it's yeah. a, And I know I, I said to you before while you guys were setting up uh, about another band that they were going to be called. Jet H Park, mm, mm-hmm. and Jet H Park being right, by right, board right, place—that right. was another name. But but Redstone Lane Park is a great name. Um, let's talk about some of your musical influences. Who influenced you? To, uh, Matt plays the drums. So who were some of your musical influences to get you to uh, to play the drums? Um, er- early on, I mean, it goes through you know a ton of phases. Early on, I was listening to AM radio with all those disco beats and and just love just listening to the drums, not even the singing. And then got into, you know, uh, uh, Kiss and, and stuff like that. And one day my brother was, in fact, my brother Michael uh, handed me, I think it was Zeppelin Four, And he says, you know, if you think Peter Chris is good, listen to yeah. this guy, you know. <laughs> and ever since then, I was, I was a big Bonham fan. But yeah. now, I, you know, I listen to many, you know, many different guys. As a matter yeah. of fact, speaking of Bonham, is uh, today I just watched on Netflix. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, count on me. C- or count me in. Count me in. Count me in. That's it. Yeah, count me in. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, it was the only good, problem yeah. is they did. They left Peter Chris out of there. Yeah. And they left out Neil Peart. Right. I mean, for, right. I mean, two, you yeah. know, pretty inf- and the guys that were talking, I know were influenced by, by Peter Chris and Neil Peart, but they, they yeah. I don't know why they didn't it's mention It's hard. But, they they yeah. left a ton of yeah. guys yeah. out, but yeah. yeah. But they did mention Bonham and Keith Moon, actually, yeah. Uh, and Charlie Watts, who had sure. just recently passed away, yeah, and uh, and Ringo Starr, right, yeah. So, Frank, um, definitely the first was Kiss, mm-hmm. as anybody in our generation. Yeah. I mean, that was really it. And then I did start listening from my older sisters, Led Zeppelin, the Stones, the Beatles, and then when Van Halen came out, right. that was it for me. Yeah, that was I. I just wanted to emulate everything that he did. I just thought he was the most amazing guitar player right. ever ever to come around. When and, and when did you ever actually hear him? I heard, I was uh, uh, listening to the radio mm. and they played Eruption and then You Really Got Me. And I had to run out immediately and buy the album Absolutely. and try to understand what he was doing because no one ever saw anything like that before. Yeah. So I was trying to understand what he was doing. Yeah. And then finally, years later, um, I learned how to play it. And I was just like, wow, this is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, everything. Yeah. yeah, My quick story to Eddie Van Halen, uh, we talked, I'm a, I'm a big Van Halen fan also, and I can rem- distinctly remember how, how silly little things stick in your mind, but as a kid, I remember being in the cafeteria in Lodi High School, and some kid behind me had a tape recorder, and he played Eruption, 
and naturally went into you really got me and i was like what the heck was that i I couldn't like at that time like you said jimmy page ace freely jeff beck all those guys but it wasn't anything like like Eddie Van Halen at that time, and when I heard it, it was like yeah. And then when know, I got the album, the first album, yeah. I mean, I just could, I, would, I just couldn't stop listening to it. Yeah, absolutely. Still today, I still love to listen yeah, to that. Me album. Too, yeah, me too, all the time. Yeah, same as these guys. You know, it started with you know Kiss early on, and uh, you know Zeppelin, Who, Stones, and that whole um, genre of of rock bands. And but, but let me ask you this though, Rich, being a bass player is a little different than a guy playing the drums or, or the guitar. Yeah. Who actually influenced you on on becoming a bass player? And well, that's a funny story because originally I was gonna I was thinking about becoming uh, starting to play the drums, mm. and a friend of mine was playing bass and taking lessons. And he, I guess he was about two years into it, and he was like, "Okay, I'm gonna get a, a, a new bass and a new amp. I'm gonna just sell my old stuff." And I was like, "Well, how much you want for it?" He's like, "I don't know. Give me a hundred bucks." So I'm like, guess I'm gonna play the bass now. Uh. <laughs> so it kind of like it kind of like happened. But then I kind of fell you, into it. Once you started that, who did you like? Who did you aspire to be or, or well, aspire? Who was your? I I've been an Alice Cooper fan for a long hmm. time, so I I couldn't even tell you who the bass players were on some of his stuff. But I just say was, it was Dennis Dunaway. I, I'm not really sure, Dennis. but uh, uh, some some of the bass on on those early Cooper hmm. albums are, are is pretty amazing. And then I got into you know Maiden and Rush. Yeah. And that was just kind of like pushed it over the top at that point. And uh, while well, you got the mic, Rich, how, how long have you been playing the bass? Well, I started when I was, I guess, around 12, 11 or 12. Um, I didn't get serious until a little bit later. Uh, I really got serious when I started playing with Kenny and Paul, mm-hmm. which was probably 85. Okay. So I've been playing for a minute. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Frank? Um, I actually started playing the piano um, when I was – I don't know, four or five, because we had a piano in my house. My sister took lessons from Mrs. Froelich, who everyone from, you know, Lodi. <laughs> yeah. And But I always wanted to play the guitar, but they said my fingers were too small. Learn how to play the piano, learn how to read music. So I started playing the guitar when I was, I don't know, maybe six. Right. So, yeah, so 48 years. Wow. You know, just to, you know, told my age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, everyone knows me anyway. And hey, Matt? Yeah, you know, grammar school when uh, Mr. K- I think it was Mr. Canizaro yes. came around and, and showed you all the instruments you can play. So I guess, you know, fourth or fifth grade started out on, on the pad. And, okay. uh, so, again, we're here tonight. You guys are, are going to play a few songs for us. As a matter of fact, you're going to do some original songs, correct? Um, what do you have plans for? I mean, what, what are your future plans going forward from here? Do you, do you anticipate playing out anywhere? Are you guys going to... Keep going. Or? Uh, well, we've been doing recording over over Frank's house, so yeah, we just want to, you know, we've been writing some some good stuff, and you know, by the way, you know, as far as influences, you know, it's, to play with great musicians like these guys, it, it's mm. always you know inf- influential. And uh, saying that, you know, we're doing uh, you know recording that these guys songs that these guys are writing, right. and uh, hopefully do uh, you know gigging like um, not more or less you know down the block where we're gonna do you know three sets for the night, more like. Uh, I don't know places like uh, was a place in Teaneck, Mexicali, or, uh, Mexicali or, or even or, doing an know. opening act for somebody, yeah. you know, playing ten songs, you know, doing like forty five minutes or something like mm. that. All right, so you know, one thing I like to add too, now that, now that Matt mentions it, when it comes to influences, just being just growing up in Lodi at the time we grew up, there were so many local guys yeah. that were so in, influential. I mean, with me, you know, the guys you, you remember, Truth and, and of course, you know, Anthony, uh, Henry, P- Jimmy Panetti, all, all those guys. Those guys were big influences yeah. on, on me to you know get a little bit more serious playing. And well, little, just a quick thing on on Henry. Um, Henry is actually just became his uh, father, uh, his uh, uncle-in-law. Oh really? He, he married. In, uh, this is uh, Officer Nicky Novre uh, married into the um, into the Tantillo oh, wow. or the Policastro family. Oh, okay. So okay. Henry is actually right, Nick. Shout out to Henry Tantillo. Yeah, Henry's very, Henry's very, very, very cool. And man. the guys very from cool. Truth, uh, because like you said, yes, they were everywhere. And and Lodi was had such. Uh, everybody played in the band. I mean, I, I yeah, know I was in a band you know Henry. me too. I was in played in a band with my brother-in-law John Denoble. I played in a band with my buddy Steve Drodis. I mean, we were always everybody in town somewhere along the line. Uh, growing up in Lodi was in a band. It was yeah. such a great thing growing up here, and everybody, like you said, you met each other through the music, and you played uh, with each other. So yeah, it was great. 
Yeah, the, the first serious band I got in was me, Kenny, and Paul. We had no exception. And mm. the way the way we got together was I went up and played a song with Truth. Mm. They used to do uh, Love Rain on Me by The Who. Yes. And at that so at that time, Henry would also play the keyboards. They had two keyboards going. And Bobby Spavero used to go up and play bass with him. So I asked him, hey, can I go up and play one day? So like, yeah, sure. So I went up and played. Kenny happened to be there. Mm. And he goes, oh, I didn't know you played the bass. And, and that's how we got, we ended up getting together. So it all kind of ties in. It's pretty Absolutely. wild, man. Right, right. It was a great place to Speaking grow Speaking of truth, do you remember when they played City Lights? Were you able to... I was, I used to do sound for them a lot of times oh, there. did you yeah. really? I remember Tulio did the... the Tulio, sound. me and Tulio used to do sound and lights all the time. We battled them at the Wellington <laughs> Roller Rink. <laughs> and we, we actually lost. But. <laughs> <laughs> Against Truth, you, yeah, 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 Truth, yeah. they were tight, man. That I mean, the they battle, were... That was the Battle of Bands. It was, yeah, we were, were the tight. finals, me and yeah, us and them. It was funny. Yeah. All right, guys, you ready to play? Yeah. Absolutely. All right, Lodi, stick around. And you're going to hear from um, Redstone Lane Park. All right, guys, stick around. All right, Lodi, and now your own Redstone Lane. Take it away, guys. This song is called Friday Night.
song is called So Far Away. She cries alone in the morning I want to be by her side I want to see her happy I love that beautiful smile on down and it's our newest song we're working on. Take 
song, girl, about who you are. You thought you live your life so right now you're right here by my side. You thought you were so high above, now you're here with the rest of us. This next song is called Dreamin'. I'm 
submarines.
Very nice. All right. Redstone Lane, thank you very much for coming in. As a parting gift, Frank, I have a, uh, a Lodi Police Department challenge coin for much. each of you. Um, you guys growing up in Lodi, if you look at the back of that, that is in honor of uh, Sergeant Peter Voto and uh, Gary Tedesco, who were brutally murdered back in August of 1963. So those coins hold a, a special, a special uh, place in our hearts here in Lodi and especially in the uh, – Lodi Police Department. Again, thank you guys for coming out. Thanks for having we us, Aaron. Appreciate it. Um, did a great job. Um, Lodi, stay safe. Stay Lodi strong. God bless you all. We'll see you soon. And uh, hope to hope we see you guys out on the road somewhere someday soon. All right, Lodi, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Thanks.